Markdown has been around for about 15 years now, and there are a couple different forms of it as well as some extensions to it. We're not going to use just the regular basic Markdown because we're focused on creating a web page in GitHub. We're going to use the form that GitHub uses, which is often referred to as GFM or GitHub Flavored Markdown. So I showed some examples on Dylan Germany. Go ahead and close that out because that's not what I'm going to use. Instead, I'm going to use this Markdown editor here, which I showed last time. You can get to through this URL. Or if you want to type in the full URL yourself and not chance a tiny URL, this is the full URL, which isn't too bad. Before we actually start working with different Markdown tags, let's look at the editor that I'm using. So. We've got two panes. We've got the code here, which changes the live rendering here, right? So it's two pane, which is nice because then you don't have to like save and refresh and load through other things. So that's super nice. And we've got some options up here. So this here is spell check, right? So when I spaced out, you saw that it highlighted that to tell me that there's a misspelling there. I can untoggle that if I want. And then we've got a series of other options too, right? So we've got reading mode, which just shows me the document like that, which I don't think is very useful, but you know, whatever. Night mode, which if you don't like lots of brightness, this might be a little less strain on your eyes. Generate shareable link. So that could be pretty cool if you're planning on working with someone else or you just wanna show your work to someone else. Although if we're using GitHub pages, uh, if you just wanna show your work with someone else, then that will suffice. But if you're wanting to like, work with someone else, then this might be more useful, right? And so when I click that, you can see now here that this link has changed, right? We now have this whole string of letters up here that I could um, then send this whole URL and they could see it as well. We've got a save option, although uh, it may not be entirely reliable. As you can see, the tooltip there says it's experimental still. We've got a download option which lets me save it as Markdown, or it converts it to HTML. So I talked about that in the previous video, right? That, that the web doesn't actually use Markdown, it needs HTML. And then we've got this option too, which lets me open something from my computer, right? So that could be potentially useful depending on what you want to do. So I'm gonna switch over to night mode because I think it's a little bit less strain on the eyes. As we get further into the short course, we will use some other things, like of course using GitHub Pages itself, which uh, I'm logged into GitHub here, right? And you might be saying, well, why don't you just use GitHub Pages to begin with? Why are we using something else at all? And in addition to the other features I showed you already on the other tool, the other reason is when we do stuff on here, like let me just delete where it says new document, and if I, commit the changes. This part shows automatically, but when I go over here and I refresh this, this part doesn't show automatically. So not only am I not being able to see live what I'm doing, I have to actually wait a while for it to refresh and show up properly on my GitHub page. And that's fine, but it's time that I could be using instead to create instead of just waiting around. And not only that, but being able to see it live means that if I make a mistake, I can see that edit, that error, whatever I did at that moment, instead of waiting until I come over here and then seeing it and then trying to figure out where was it? When did I do that? How did that happen, et cetera, right? So a couple of reasons why I'm using the other editor and then we're going to work with this later on. Let's see if I refresh it now. There we go. So it takes a moment, right? So yeah, 